The Texas defense was nasty last year, and it got better and better as the year went on. The defensive coordinator of that unit joins us now in studio, Manny Diaz. Manny, did you miss us? I did. I've, I've been Don't lie. withdrawal. <laughs> no, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and shakes, but I've, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Life is good again. Oh, we loved talking to you last year. One of the things you talked about a lot was controlled chaos within the defense and, and something where guys are flying around, but there is – you know, it, it's controlled, and there actually is something going on there. It's not just guys running around with their heads cut off. Controlled chaos is tough, especially on that first game. How do you control the chaos in a naturally chaotic environment? Yeah, well, you have to have rules. You know, I mean, everything comes back to I've got to have rules that dictate what I do in every situation. What makes Wyoming a challenge is that they line up in almost the exception to rule in every play. They're going to be an empty. They go on balance formations, tackle over formations, everything that really requires somebody to do something abnormal than what they would normally do so as a coach you have to hope that you prepared your guys just in the fundamental base hey this is how we get lined up this is how we play and if we can be lined up before the snap then we have a fighting chance to play the play now you talked about the cowboys a little bit brett smith is their quarterback he runs around how do you get ready for a guy who's a dual threat quarterback it's, it's really hard to practice in practice you know because we're always going to sack him you know against a scout team but uh he's a guy that can extend plays number one he's their leading rusher from last year an average of a five yards of carry which when you and that's counting sack yardage mm -hmm. so you know he's a threat running the football he's, he's broken long runs he's a very fast uh, individual and then he can keep he can keep plays alive and, and he'll scramble the run and scramble the throw which puts a lot of strain on your defense you have to sometimes what we say cover him twice <laughs> And, um, and, and when you don't, if somebody doesn't cover the guy twice, that's where you can give up a big play. And really, that's what in game one scares you more than anything, is giving up a cheap touchdown. And he's good enough to make that happen. Oh, you guys end up running a lot of man defense because you have such talented cornerbacks. Against a guy who can run, if you're playing man, you're running with those receivers. You're not looking at the quarterback. Do you play more zone against Wyoming because of that? Yeah, you have to you have to have a a, um, a mix and match of both of both ways. And you can play man and sort of have a, a, a guy that's assigned for the quarterback that can watch him. Uh, because then if you play all zone, now there are guys that maybe can't get open against man. They can start nickel and dime you and, and and moving the ball, moving the chains in zone. So it's a little bit of that. That's. The dilemma, I mean, that's what you have to sort of take into account as a play caller. Um, we want to get the ball back. We want to get three and outs, get the ball back to our offense. Uh, we want to not give a big play. Certainly man makes you more susceptible to those type of things, and that's the balance in, in play calling. All right, well, you've always talked about the middle of the defense. It's got to start there. Let's focus on the defensive tackles. You have, well, you lose Keiston Randall. You've got two newcomers in Brandon Moore and Malcolm Brown who are highly touted. You've got a former tailback who is starting in Chris Whaley. And let's not forget about Ashton Dorsey right. and Desmond Jackson. How do you expect this unit to perform this year? Well, what I want to see is I want to see just a, a, a group that comes at the offense and waves. You know, I think what we feel like is we have four starters at defensive tackle, and we can just sort of come at them. And you mentioned Tank as well, Jackson in there. And, and, just, and we're never tired. We're always just playing relentlessly. Usually those three interior offensive linemen are playing the entire game. And they just get so discouraged because here comes a guy and boom, boom, and then all of a sudden here's a new guy that's been on the sideline just dying to get in the game. And uh, and in the tempo offense that we play against in the Big 12 Conference and the in the fast tempo and this the the amount of snaps you have to defend in the Big 12 Conference to be able to have um, two lines we can come at at the offense is going to be a big plus for us. And the guy you learned from Mickey Andrews really started doing that a long time right. ago. He had the talent to rotate fresh guys in. So we mentioned Malcolm Brown, five-star defensive tackle recruit. We expect to see him a little bit. What other freshmen on defense have really impressed you? Well, you know, we have a neat thing. Really more what should fall in line with the development of a college football player and then a college football team where because of the experience we have coming back, some of the depth we have coming back, all of our freshman class, who we really think highly of all the defensive guys we have, but now what we can do is instead of having to thrust them into an important role uh, on the defense on first and ten, is that now they can start to earn their right little by little to get on the field. And that's really what we want. And, and so for me to signal somebody out, and it, it's not a cop-out, they've all been coming along at the same level. They all flash. Right. And mostly they flash in drills. But no different than running a company, we, we, we'd really still rather somebody show off in the mailroom <laughs> before we promote them to the next job. Right. Texas in the last few years has not had that luxury. We just started a true freshman at cornerback last year. We we couldn't we had to promote him already to, to executive vice president. Uh, now we now those roles are filled, 
And so now our young guys, they can learn, find out they can do some smaller type skills. If they can get the coffee the right way we want it, then we can get them on, on a bigger job. And that's that seems like a, a small thing. That's a big thing for the development of our football team. Well, the guy who was all over the coffee and all over the mailroom in his first year was Steve Edmond. Now he's going to start. What do you like about him as a Mike linebacker? Well, I like Steve because he's a, he, he, he loves the game of football. He really loves studying the game, wants to do right. Uh, obviously, he's a big physical guy. You know, he's a, he's a big, strong guy. He's got long levers, long arms, long legs, so he's hard to block if he uses his hands to protect his body. Um, so he, he, all the qualities, and then he can still run for his size. He can run faster than most people that are his size can run. So he's really what we want to have at that position. What he just needs is that bats. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can you can be you know 500 pounds and be able to bench press the weight room and jump over the building. If you don't know where to stick your nose on any given running play, we have a, a breakdown in our defense. So he, I feel good about Steve in terms of what he knows assignment-wise, but we just got to get into games and we got to go do it. No, another guy who needs some reps but has tons of talent is DeMarco Cobbs. DeMarco started as a secondary guy, a guy who can really run. How can his speed help out the secondary? Well, in a couple of ways. Number one, it gives us versatility. We don't necessarily have to go to nickel defense if they give us you know, multiple wide receiver formations. He's a guy that's uh, tough enough to play in the box and play the run and understands all the linebacker run fit fits, but at the same time can do some of our coverage element in the back end. You know, so he can think like a DB. He's got some training in that experience, but he knows how to play linebacker. And then he's just a fast individual anyway. And, and again, the faster you make your defense, uh, when there is a little bit of a hole, the hole stays open for a short amount of time, and 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 we can chase down our mistakes with a, with eleven fast guys. So Demarco is a guy that we. Um, you know, we, we really have high hope for, and I'm really looking forward to him having a good season. Well, Manny, you're in your second year here as a defensive coordinator. What's the biggest difference between year one and year two? Well, I think the relationship with the coaches and the players. Uh, we all we know our guys uh, better. We understand the conference better. And, and you know, we can't wait till halfway through the season to really get it going. You know, that's what I'm looking forward to this weekend. We really need to hit the ground running and play fast. Wyoming will cause us problems, and it's still game one. And you know you're going to make a jump throughout the first month of the season. But... But I look to see a little bit more of the carryover from the bowl game in terms of our guys playing fast. We may not always go the right direction, but I want to see 11 guys playing fast and, and relentlessly attacking on the field. And, if, and it took us a while to get to that this year. I'd like to see that from the first snap in, in this season. You know, we could listen to you talk football all day long, but I know we know you have a schedule to hit. So last question, we're going to have some fun with you. I know Major Applewhite uh, took Julie, his wife, on a trip all over Europe. They had a good summer. What was your favorite day this summer? Anything stand out? Well, we, we, we get a chance to go down to Florida, and uh, we did some neat things with our kids. You know, we're down there in the Keys and, and got to go, um, you know, kayaking and jet skiing and that type of thing, you know, and, and just being around family. That, that, that's the thing in this profession. I think that, uh, you know, we, we raise other people's kids for a majority of the year, and, and sometimes it's hard to raise your own. And, uh, and all of our wives, Julie, Stephanie, and all the wives on the staff, they do an unbelievable job because we don't get enough time to be with them right. uh, from August 1st really until almost through signing day. So uh, the time we do get, Coach Brown is great about it in the summertime to make sure we get to spend time with our family. But, but any of the days, we're down in the Florida Keys, which to me is one of my favorite places on the planet, and just hanging out poolside with the family, that's, that's something that um, – that you don't forget. Well, Manny, it was controlled, but it was not chaotic. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure as always.